Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Reverend Bob Lico, the Honey Badger himself, bringing a very quick and short presentation, just food for thought. And the title of this little stream of consciousness is dealing with the fact that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is hardly evangelical. And remember, kids, to like, share, and hit that subscribe button and help us share the message. And there are a couple ways you can get involved. Number one, you can subscribe to our, I didn't put in free, but it is free, monthly newsletter called Truth Matters. We've been publishing this newsletter continuously for over 20 years now. So if you'll please send us your physical mailing address, we'll send you the actual physical paper newsletter. And certainly you can make donations uh, to DMI, make a check payable to DMI. And there's our address there. And if you've got a complaint about some of our productions or comment, as they used to say on uh, the car guys on NPR, Write your comment on the back of a $50 bill, and it'll get our attention pronto. Just saying. Did you know that during Martin Luther's life, his fledgling group referred to themselves as evangelicals, as the evangelical church as opposed to the Roman Catholic Church. Yes, historically, Lutherans were evangelical in expression, which back then basically meant putting the gospel back into the Mass and taking Mary out of it, which was a tremendous improvement. Uh, nothing wrong with doing that. That should have been done from the beginning. And those who did come out of the Roman Catholic cult in Martin Luther's time, the 1500s, they were very active in sharing their faith, their newfound belief and, and reaffirmation of their trust in Jesus Christ alone. And in fact, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod itself, is the result of missionary activity by earlier and far more truly evangelical Christians who happen to have been Lutherans. Uh, and to this day, it's, it must be stated, this is very true, that uh, the Lutheran Church is actively involved in mission work. In fact, our own portion of Jesus' ministry, Discernment Ministries International, has given thousands and raised thousands of dollars, uh, mostly from non-Lutherans, to help the Lutheran seminary in Uganda. The Lutheran church that Tracy and I attended, we presented this sister seminary, if you will, sister Lutherans to them. Our former congregation was very affluent. I know because I counted the money there for several years, and I know exactly how wealthy the people are, and compared to, they're very affluent. Well, we managed to give $600 a year, $50 a month to Uganda, which was fine. But me personally, and what we did, our own activities raised far more money. Uh, so my, what I'm getting at is that they, they do give money to foreign missions. And in that sense, they are evangelical. Uh, they give, of course, and support purely Lutheran work for the most part, which is understandable. That's not anything different than what the Presbyterians or Baptists do, to be fair. Uh, but as far as the LCMS goes back historically, they're a result of, of a missionary thrust into the United States. And when they first got here as Lutherans, and there's a lot more history I could go into, but at first they did make inroads. Uh, they reached out to some of the Native Americans, at least some did. And then as America grew, uh, the Lutherans stopped doing this. 
and they became ghettoized. And as there became, and then at one point there were quite a few German Lutherans in America, cities like Milwaukee and, and my, my own parent. So my dad was from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and his folks came here in the 1800s and he was raised Lutheran and this is in the 30s. And they spoke German in, in the church that my dad was raised in, up in Newberry, Michigan. Uh, and that's one reason that they don't really today have the right to call themselves evangelical because at, at a certain point, really in the, about the late 1800s, they stopped reaching out for whatever reason. They stopped being really evangelical and, and sharing the gospel. Uh, they became very inward. Ask yourself this, my friends, regardless of their history, is glorious, beautiful, I don't care. What have you done lately? Ask, answer this. When was the last time an adult or a sentient child came to faith in Jesus Christ at the end of a Lutheran service? When did a person hear a message that was so dynamic and dramatic and convicting that after the service, the person had to go and find the pastor and, and, and cry out as they did in the book, what must I do to be saved? And the Lutheran pastor should have the answer, which is, of course, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved. When was the last time a Lutheran of any stripe, and I say that because there are many variations within the sect itself, but when was the last time a Lutheran came to your door, rang your doorbell, knocked on your door, asking to share the gospel with you? When was the last time? In answer to the first question, my wife and I, in a decade of attending, faithfully attending Lutheran worship every Sunday and Wednesday and whenever else they met, we never encountered anyone who ever testified to us or, and we sat in the front row, that we ever saw come up to the pastor or even saw him talking to in the coffee hour. And it certainly was never, hey, John Smith came in today. Uh, he lives down the street and he's received the Lord. He's believed on the Lord Jesus today. And next week he's going to be baptized. Praise the Lord. When did you ever hear that? Or when was the last time you heard it? I bet you a dollar to a donut, you've never heard that in a Lutheran church, in an LCMS congregation. And you're not going to. For messages that allegedly contained law, what God thunders and demands of us that we're incapable of doing, which should drive us to the gospel, to Christ, who has done this freely for us. When is that? message really rung home and converted people. I'm not saying that that's a wrong message. There's something wrong in the delivery or the way that they're proclaiming the Bible. It's not impacting the people. Well, I'll just say this. It has nothing to do with being evangelical or not. But in 10 years of watching people in, in worship, no one there takes any notes of the preaching. Very few even in the Bible study. Some do in the Bible study. But none in the sermon. Why not? They don't expect to learn anything. That's my answer. When was the last time the Lutheran churches in your area made the news in some positive manner, showing forth some aspect of the kingdom of God? When did all the Lutheran churches in, in your community all work together uh, to build a pro-life center or an orphanage or a feeding station all together, pulled together as one, as, as a local expression of the Lutheran church. When was the last time they did that? Maybe they do that in Lake Wobegon or some areas. It doesn't happen in, in, in Lansing very much, if at all. Certainly nothing new newsworthy. There are no big bulletin boards, billboards anywhere on the street inviting people to come to the Good Shepherd Lutheran or this Grace Lutheran or Hope Lutheran or My Savior, whatever the name is. 
I don't see any bulletin boards advertising. Come to our church. We, you know, God's moving here. When was the last time you heard a rousing sermon on the radio or Christian television from a Lutheran pastor or teacher? We have uh, been on, the, there are only two Lutheran radio programs really that I'm familiar with, the Lutheran Hour, which is, I guess, still limping along, and then they had another semi-apologetic program called Issues Etc., and I was on that over 50 times, my friends, going way back with Don Matzett, was on there many, many times, and then after that with uh, Todd uh, Wilkins, many, many times. So they know me well. Now, that really isn't so much a program of pro proclaiming the gospel as it was, uh, at least as far as they wanted me to share, uh, exposing errors in other parts of the church and, and in cults and sects that were doing wrong, which was nothing wrong with that. But it wasn't evangelical. People were not coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and there was nothing uh, evangelical in the message in that sense. In other words, there was no gospel appeal to if you have not believed on the Lord, turn to him, trust in him today, trust in him alone. You know, there's one death per person. You're a day closer to the grave. Do you know the Lord? Do you know where you'd go if you die tonight? That's a legitimate question. They may think it's a silly Baptist kind of uh, phony baloney kind of thing. I got news for you, when you're laying in the hospital and you're facing death, it's the question on your mind. It'd be nice if someone had come and told that person what the answer is. When was the last time a Lutheran handed you a gospel tract in the street, just passing them out to, to people? Or you found one in a library book? And on the back, it had the address stamped on it of your local Missouri Synod Church. Well, we don't do those things, Bob. That's, that's not how we operate. I know. And that's why you don't have the right to call yourselves evangelicals. Because you don't share the gospel. We share it on the pulpit in the, in the sermon. Kind of, sort of, maybe, very weakly. I, again, to go back to number one point, when was the last time an adult came to you, Pastor, and said, man, the Holy Spirit <laughs> nailed me. Whatever you said, I don't know what happened, but uh, pray with me. I'm, I, I need the Lord. When has that ever encountered in your ministry? When do you ever even give people the opportunity, if they even feel that type of conviction? That's why I honestly, before God today, would never bring an unsaved person to an LCMS uh, church. That's the last place I will take a lost person. If you're a babe in Christ and you want to learn uh, something maybe about the creed or the Lord's Prayer, the Lutherans could probably help you a little bit there. But if you were lost... You're not, the, the message you hear generally from the pulpit is not going to convict the adult sinner who is uh, dealing. I'm sorry, just is not. Not the things I've heard. Maybe, maybe I, I know, in all honesty, other Lutheran, I haven't heard every Lutheran pastor. Maybe some of those guys are, man, they're, they're just little Billy Sundays in the pulpit, really thundering. Uh, the ones I've known, highly respected men, very small congregations. But then most Lutheran churches are very small. But again, if you don't share the gospel, and you're not active in your communities, and you're not knocking on doors and getting to know your neighbors and inviting them out to everything that you're doing that's fun and exciting, that uh, you know may be used by God to attract people, uh, if you're not doing that, I got news for you. Your church is not going to grow. And it's not growing by leaps and bounds. You have a tremendous backdoor revival in America, Missouri Senate. When your young people get to be the age of 18 and 19 and can leave the home and go to college, 
You can look it up. It's all it's online. You can look the statistics up. They don't come back. They don't leave Christ necessarily. They just leave Lutherans. Lutheranism. They lose uh, their uh, zeal for deadness or something and want more. Some people really want to grow. They want to know the Lord Jesus. They want to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Oh, I know, we, as the Lutherans, don't want to hear about glory. They just want the theology of the cross. And they even misunderstand that. They only get a part of that right. But as I say, they have no right to consider themselves the true evangelicals when they don't share their faith, when they do not instruct their members. I'll share this. In our last congregation, the last Lutheran denomination congregation that we'll ever be a part of. In fact, the last denomination that my wife and I will ever join. We're done with joining denominational Christianity. We're Christians and we attend church, but we're not joining your denominations. Lutheran members are not instructed. In our former church, the education committee, three men, good men, came up with the idea to, to offer a course in apologetics, how to defend the faith. Now, naturally, Bob Tracy, who had an apologetics ministry for 20 years, been on their denomination and synod's radio station over 50 times, uh, you know, what do we know? They didn't uh, ask us for any input, which is fine. We attended whatever they came up with. So they, they start out with this little course on apologetics, which is a good thing. And it was basic 101 stuff, you know, who is God, how to defend, is there a God, what are the kinds of basic arguments for God, and, and going on from there. It was very good stuff, but there was a problem. And the problem was the book was not published by CPH, Concordia Publishing House. It was actually, well, uh, it was it was written and then published by a reform group, Calvinist. And don't you know, there were a few things that the author had written that smacked of kind of reformed thinking. Well, so the pastor decided not to do that. And the next session, we got a better book. And this is an apologetics, how to defend the faith, right? So what does the Evangelical Lutheran Church come up with to how to defend the Christian faith? Lutheranism 101. In fact, I, I might have that book here. It may be here. Let's see here. I've got... Let's see, baptism here. This is the dogmatics, Lutheran dogmatics stuff there. But anyway, yes, yes, no. Lutheranism 101. What does it mean, basically, to be a Lutheran? That's not apologetics. Well, it's apologetics on defending Lutheranism. It has nothing to do with defending the Christian faith or sharing the Christian faith. There wasn't really too much about even sharing the Lutheran faith. It's why we believe what we believe as Lutherans. Now, the sad thing was, the vast, there were, you know, pretty good attendance at first. 99% of the people that were there had been Lutherans, lifelong Lutherans, cradle Lutherans, and they were in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and older, preaching to the choir that did not equip the members on how to share Jesus with lost people. They started that. They started with the basics. How did, is there a God? How do we defend that we believe in a God? And going from there, and God reveals himself to his people, and how, how we get the Bible. That was a good track to go on. But because it wasn't from the synod, they got a little nervous. In other words, the pastor was so insecure that he couldn't say, look, guys, this is what we believe about what the guy said. This is what they believe and this is why we disagree with them and, and believe our position. No, 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 no. We just, we, we, oh, oh, that's that's a heterodox group, a heretical group. They're not really Christians. We can't use any of their stuff, even though it was really pretty good there at the first. 
That's why I say they're not evangelical. Their members are not instructed how to share the simple gospel with other people who have not been to church. And you don't have to know a whole lot, but you have to have some direction. And in our former church, actually, the members were discouraged from sharing Jesus with other people. And the big concern, really, in, in almost any uh, LCMS church is that sharing the gospel often leads to a decision on the part of the hearer. Hmm, just like in Acts after Peter gets up and preaches and the people hear it and are pricked to their hearts, they respond by making a decision and saying, what must we do to be saved? Yeah, you're going to have a discussion. And then the Lutheran is supposed to say, believe if you believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Christ, you will be saved. But they don't do that. They're foolish in this action. I'm not calling them fools, but they're acting foolishly by not sharing Jesus with their neighbors in a meaningful and a way that will uh, produce fruit. Very few Lutherans have ever prayed with us a, uh, a sinner, a lost person, to receive Christ and been there when they have heard the message and have been brought to faith and have acknowledged that faith in prayer. It's a precious thing. But Lutherans will never experience that. Lutheran pastors will never have that joy. Lutheran evangelical work is infant baptism. That is what saves people. Infant baptism saves. And so if you have an infant, then we'll water baptize that infant and call them a member of the church and include them in the role and consider that a convert and consider that an evangelical work on our part. That's far from what Luther meant. It's very far from what the Bible means. It's very far from what the early Lutherans did. And frankly, it's very far what true evangelical Christians do to this day. If you are truly evangelical, my brother and sister, that means that you are a proclaimer. You're sharing your faith on your vocation. Now, there are lots of, I could get, we could do a whole hour. I'm going to cut this off in about two minutes, but we could do a whole hour on how to share your faith. It's not difficult. You have to get over some initial fear. Look at the Jehovah Witnesses. My goodness, I've had Jehovah, we've had Jehovah Witnesses come and knock on our door. We've had Moonies approach us. We've had the Way International in the past. We've had Mormons. I've had a black-eyed child, demonic entity knock on my door but I have never had a Lutheran knock on my door asking to share Jesus, offering simply to leave some literature for them to consider. Oh, we don't do that because we might, they might think we're like Baptists or they might think we're like those cult people. Well, my goodness gracious people, get in the fight, get in the mix, get out there and share your faith. When the enemy comes and knocks on the door, on your neighbor's door, you better go over behind them and say, hey, those people that just came here, they're not right. They're not really Christians, and I'll be glad to explain to you why. And tell them, hopefully you know something about the, about the Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you don't, you can find out very easily. Does it take a whole lot to refute them? And I was kind of hoping that our former church was going to go that direction in the apologetics arena to train the people how to answer a Mormon, how to answer the Jehovah's Witness, how to answer a Seventh-day Adventist. But they can't, they, that got sidetracked. Enemy got in and, and they had to go right back into the cult. We've got to go right back into our sect. We've got to stay right within this tight box. There's no life in any other part of the body of Christ because we are the few, the proud, the Lutheran. We are not Protestants. We are not Roman Catholic. We are the true, orthodox, visible, 
expression of the church on earth today. And so if you are so anointed, my Lutheran brethren, if you are the bastion of God's truth and the purity of the gospel and of practice, then by all means get off your blessed assurance and get out there and share Jesus Christ and faith in him alone based on the gospel alone. That's what Luther believed and that's what he preached. And he preached it openly and he preached it boldly. And so did his followers. And they were persecuted and they were condemned and they were burned and they were tortured and martyred. You know your history. What happened to you, Missouri Synod? Well, I can explain that. I've been explaining it through the false doctrines that you've embraced and the sad fact that you're nothing more than Roman Catholicism light today and Rome uh, does no better at evangelism than you do. The only reason that your candle still flickers at all and has not been totally quenched is because you do support foreign missions. And I strongly encourage you to do that more and more. Uh, and I am thankful to say that my encounters with the Lutherans in foreign countries, they have the fire. They share their faith personally, house to house. They preach hour-long sermons and longer. They worship the Lord with praise and dancing and singing and clapping and musical instruments and with joy and fervency that you do not find anywhere in the Missouri Synod congregations of America. So please, by all means, can t give more. Give more and more and more to foreign missions where they still really believe in being evangelical. Selah.